Hello guys and welcome to part 10 of my rock creation series and I actually forgot one thing uh, in the last video because I got carried away and that's uh, how do we get uh, all the details back onto this guy here because uh, right now it's uh, it's not very detailed as you can see and the way to do it is by using the um, uh, the projection tool it's found under the sub tool uh, you have a sub menu called project and um, right now it's grayed out as you can see and that's because we don't have anything to project on uh, to project from and what project uh, all does is uh, it's gonna take uh, we have the, the detailed rock behind here uh, if we just turn off um, hang on yeah uh, the detail rock we have the copy uh, from uh, before we have that here and we have all the details here still um, but we needed a way to get uh, get a lower version of the same rock uh, which we have here and that's why I took a copy of it and a way to get this back is by then taking this one the the simple uh, version with um, which is this? Um, yeah, well, uh, close to 1000 polygons, and then subdividing it. Um, you can press Ctrl D. Uh, you can see the subdivision level here is rising. So now we have uh, 2.9k uh, and 11,000. And remember, we had original about uh, 2 million. So I want to go keep going doing this until I pass that so now I have 3 million um, polygons and that's way above but that's just the way it is um, so what happened now is that uh, we have a very soft version of our rock but we have the the one with all the detail here and now when I uh, make the detail version visible I can now click this project all and initially it's going to have a distance it's going to try and project from uh, to set to 0 0.02 um, for this I believe it's okay for me to set it all the way up to 1 and I'm not really sure project all blur amount uh, not really sure what that does uh, and I haven't touched the projection shell I think this might have something to do with how far it projects out but uh, then again also the projection distance I'm not really sure how these works so for now I tend to just set the distance to fairly high and then just click project all so basically what this does is to take that detail and adjust uh, the simple one which we subdivided uh, so it matches the all the details we had on the original rock and that is what is going on right now and it's going to take a little while, so I might pause the video. Alright, um, so now we have the all the details um, projected on to the, the one with the subdivisions. So we can actually travel up and down if we just hide the original one. You can see we can travel up and down the subdivision level up until we get to the, the detailed version of the rock. And you will see a few... Um, artifacts from the projection actually here and that's what why you need to, to be careful when you do this you can see here we have some funny things going in so you might want uh, need to do this a few times with some different settings um, so since this uh, is not really acceptable I'm gonna undo this um, and 
try and reproject it again. So I'm, I touch this one. Uh, I don't think I need to do that. So I'm just going to set that to zero and keep using the distance of one and show this one. Um, I'm not really sure why. Oh. Okay, so I need to undo. I think there. Yeah. All right. So I want to get back to the uh, that place where we had uh, undo a few times until you get back to this look. And then uh, try with a distance of one and projection cell of zero and then free project. Let's try that. And I'm going to pause the video again. Okay, and we're back. And this time it seems to be a little bit better. Actually, way better. Uh, we still have our details and we don't have any weird artifacts. Um, just checking around and I might want to do a mesh integrity check yeah it's it's just fine so uh, from here on we can actually just take this original uh, rock that we created and uh, delete it so now we only have one the one with the, the subdivisions so that's how we transfer details to uh, a, a different subtool uh, with uh, subdivisions. So since we didn't have subdivisions on initially, now we have subdivisions and w that means we have a low poly version and we have a high poly version. Okay, so um, how do we un UV unwrap inside ZBrush? Um, the way I I will show this. Um, it's kind of, um, I would say, uh, it's going to be a very short uh, version of this because uh, eventually I will uh, move into 3D Studio Max and do it. But I just wanted to point out that it is actually possible to do inside ZBrush uh, if you are in a hurry and just need to be get something done and it doesn't need to be perfect and and stuff. So. Um, and it might also partly be because I don't know exactly how to control this the best way. Um, so what you want to do is to create some um, something called um, UV islands. And UV islands are, um, well, it's going to be visible uh, more clear in a moment. Um, so you do it by opening up the UV master. I have it open in the, uh, here. You can find it uh, in the C plugin here. It's the same. Um, and if you just click unwrap, it's going to do something. And if you click the button flatten, it's going to say it can't do it um, while there are subdivisions on. So uh, instead, you can click on work on clone. And pay attention to what happens up here. It says polysphere 3. So once I click uh, work on clone, um, you can see it switched out my sub tool here. Um, I still have my uh, um, my uh, original. It is uh, now called Polysphere Four, apparently. Uh, so this is the clone, and this is uh, the original one. Anyway, so on the clone, uh, which has no subdivisions. I can click unwrap and I can click uh, flatten and that's going to show the UV map for this. So it's just going to be one UV island. So this is a UV island. So in case uh, this would, uh, this, this is not going to be optimal because it's going to be causing tons of stretching and stuff, uh, which I know because I tried it once uh, and it didn't turn out well. Um, uh, actually, one way of 
visualizing this would be to try and um, unflatten it again and then you can go down to texture map and uh, create a new texture and then just select something like um, which is uh, kind of easy to uh, see if it's distorted so something like a checker pattern uh, like this um, so you don't want to have um, stretching like you have here and um, generally you don't want things to look distorted um, so um, uh, actually it's not that bad it could have been way worse I would say um, so yeah um, as I said it's um, sometimes it's something you can use um, Generally, you want all these checkers to be looking kind of the same. So it's, ob it's obvi obviously doing a lot of stretching here. And the checkers are bigger on this side than on this side. So it's not going to be looking that good. Um, so uh, instead of that, um, you, can, um, you can actually direct it uh, to tell you where to put the seams uh, by using control painting uh, and by control painting you can say I want to attract a certain area to have a seam so let's say I wanted to have a seam going around the bottom here uh, that was a very big brush I used there uh, let's undo that um, so let's say we wanted to place a seam around here it's just for the demonstration here uh, and let's say we wanted to protect the top here we can uh, say don't put a seam on on the top here and we don't want it to be in this general area and then you could say uh, unwrap and um, flatten again and you see you get a different map so if you un unflatten this and um, Disable control painting. Where did my texture go? Uh, ah, okay. Um, we can see it's um, it's looking different, but it's still it's looking a little bit better. Maybe, maybe not. Actually, um, it still looks uh, pretty stretched here and there. So. Um, it's not really uh, an optimal way of doing it so in this case what you would normally do is to I think normally because I've done this only a few times is to see if you can break this up into a few um, UV islands so if we turn off the texture again uh, and the way to do it uh, is to hold down control you have the mask pen and, and uh, with this um, we can uh, actually uh, let's choose a different one um, so instead of using the mask pin we can use the mask rectangle and then holding down control we can drag out an area here and say everything here uh, and if you need to take something away you hold down alt while holding down control um, let's just say this is just for demonstration really um, then you can press uh, go to I can't remember the shortcut key for this actually it's control W I think mm, yeah control W uh, and then it's going to create uh, two separate um, polygroups um, as you can see it's the same as I think group must or whatever anyway um, so up here under the UV master you can say I want to uh, unwrap this using polygroups and then um, click unwrap again and uh, flatten this out so now you get two pieces instead of just one so it's actually it is definitely possible but I kind of like it like to do it in 3D Studio Max which I'm going to be showing in a moment or maybe I'm going to be doing that in the next video actually just to break things up um, so uh, with this 
unwrapping here let's take a look at the texture map uh, so turn on the texture uh, and we see it's um, well, it's actually not that bad I think I'm not really sure um, but generally you don't you don't want to have uh, you you want to have uh, squares you don't want to have any um, uh, pulled squares uh, like uh, longer squares stretched squares so um, and for, since this is a rock um, and the textures are going to be uh, or kind of uniform sort of uh, it's may it may not matter that much in this uh, situation so you could maybe just uh, proceed with this um, UV unwrap here but yeah I I would definitely try and do this in, in a different way so um, the trick uh, if you wanted to proceed with this is to uh, say copy UVs and then uh, since we are working on a clone we will go to our polysphere 4 uh, which was the original one here and then you can um, paste the uvs onto here and that means that uh, if we morph the uvs we can see it's um, just an, another way of showing instead of flattening because we can't flatten it if we have subdivisions as you remember uh, so you can see how it is and it's looking pretty cool by the way <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, instead of uh, unwrapping inside uh, ZBrush, I'm going to end this video now. And in this video, I'm going to show how I can, can do something similar inside uh, 3D Studio Max. Uh, as good as I know, uh, because I am, yeah, as you know, no expert on this. So um uh, I know there are a lot of tools out there that are way more uh, sophisticated and um, it's something I will look into uh, later on um, and see if I can uh, gather some intel on uh, what uh, what is better than 3D Studio Max. I know that people talk about something called Hitters um, UV Unwrap or something. I forgot the name uh, to be honest. But um, yeah. That's another story. So I'll be seeing you in the next, I hope. Uh, bye bye.